All right, and that uh, this my gaming company's tier list. It used to be something different, something uh, I wanted to do, and that. So yeah, um, I'm not going to do all these companies because that that'd be a bit, a bit long. But we're just going to do a few, give you a little background, the history, and then put them in the tier list. And that these are just my opinions, by the way, before people start like. Shitting out their mouths at me about how I put their favourite company in like whatever tier, or at least favourite in whatever tier. You can comment it down in a comment or something, but I don't really care. So anyway, let's get to it. So first company, Deep Silver. They were found in Germany in 2002. Uh, now based in California. They first gained recognition from Dead Island, which had the best intro soundtrack, like rap song of any game. It was by a character in the game, Sam B. <laughs> you ain't scared. Yeah. Fangs that go bump in the night. Me. Sam B. Shrunken head, broken legs, body parts on the concrete. Cut them up, butcher stab, gators in the swamp. Red light, leave them dead, running like a track meet. Scared of nobody, what your motherfuckers want? Believe me when I tell them I'm a boogeyman beast. Leave them slashed from their head to their feet. Pin bricks to the chest of a bitch well fed. Cooking meat, cannibal, trying to eat. Uh, I got a zombie on me, and you can't harm me. Yeah, who do you, who do, bitch? Drink blood like a vampire without warning. Who do you, who do? Stand up, Sam B got the thing that go bump in the night. Whoa, who do you, who do, bitch? Hide your kids, grab your wife, better get out of sight. Who do you, who do, bitch? I remember this game very well. Well, fairly well. Um, and I thought it was pretty good for 2011. Uh, zombie, a zombie game, first person shooter in 2011. If I went back and played it now, I probably think the combat's a bit clunky and all that, but for a start, I thought it was pretty good. So that was their first breakout, and then um, they had a sequel to that, which was Dead Island Riptide, which happened in 2013. There was a bit of controversy with that game, because they had a special edition, it was called the Zombie Bait Edition, and it had like a female um, torso in a bikini, it looked like it had been like mutilated and all beaten up by zombies and that, and people were like, oh, it, it comes in like a bikini. With, if you're in Europe and you bought it, you got like a Union Jack Bikini, and if you're in the US, you got like a Star Spangled like banner or whatever. Um, and people weren't happy with that, so they said, okay, if we won't send it out, we'll change it. But then they just sent it out anyway. Um, yeah, so that's a you'll see quite a lot of these as we go through the companies and about their controversies. A lot of them are quite similar, let's just say that. Uh, but they're also well known for the Saints Row series. A series I enjoyed about up to Saints Row 4, where it got a bit uh, crazy with all the superpowers and stuff. But solid games, like 2 and 3, like my favourites. Very, very good. More recently, in 2018, they released Kingdom Come Deliverance. Uh, it got a mediocre reception, but that was basically mostly because it was a medieval RPG and they promised large-scale battles. But really, there was only at best one medium scale battle and like two siege battles, which were heavily scripted. But still, it sold 500,000 copies in the first two days. Uh, and for what I've heard, it's a much better game two years on. Uh, with all the patches and DLC and stuff they've released for it. So, for Deep Silver, when we're going to place them, for me, they're going in the B tier. I think Dead Island my memories of that kind of pit up there and I haven't had too much go wrong with them, any controversies and stuff. So I think they get solid middle of the ground. Pretty good. Uh but some of the games obviously not being up to expectations. Next company, Sega. Now this is a historic, historic company responsible for Sonic the Hedgehog. Um it was founded in nineteen sixty. The early consoles struggled obviously competing against Nintendo but with the release of the Mega Drive or the Genesis in the US I believe it was called in 1988 they got a bit of success but that was kind of brief with the consoles 
has, they were still going up against Nintendo, and then two, in 2002, they decided altogether to stop making consoles. They've had so many notable games, some of them, the Yakuza series, Total War, and Lame Rule Tetris to the Genesis, which I wasn't around back then, but I probably believe it was pretty big. And for this company, Sega, you just got to respect the history, I think. Respect the history, because I'm putting them in the S tier, because they've done a lot, a lot, a lot for gaming. Not just on home consoles, but like arcade gaming as well, they just been everywhere. For a very, very long time. Okay, next. Valve. The boy Gabe Newell's company. So, Valve was founded in 1996. And it's a big key player in the modern PC gaming industry. Having started up the Steam platform. Which is probably like responsible for the purchase of like half the game, games on PC. It's crazy big. They're also known for games, which is Half-Life games, which had like Revolutionary, Physics Engine, Counter-Strike, which, you know, competitive first-person shooters is the first one that comes to your mind. It's massive, the competitive scene for Counter-Strike. Also, Portal, Team Fortress, and Team Fortress 2, Left 4 Dead series, and the Dota series. I'm also a big fan of their virtual reality stuff. They combined with HTC to make the HTC Vive. And now they've got their own uh, Valve Index, which I want to have. I've got the HTC Vive. I'm a huge fan of it. VR is just amazingly cool. First time I tried it, it blew my mind. Valve is like top tier company. Yeah, they're in my opinion, they're an S tier company for all they've done for uh, PC gaming. And uh, game in general. So yeah. Okay. Next up. 2K Games. Now this is an interesting one. Um, 2K Games was founded in 2005. They're part of the. Well they come under the Take 2 Interactive group. They publish series such as the Bioshock series. Borderlands. Civilization. But they're very very well known. For their sports uh, titles. Such as uh, NBA 2K and WWE 2K. So, despite having great games like the Bioshock and the uh, Borderlands series, when you think of 2K, you think of these sports games. And when I think of NBA 2K particularly, I think of microtransactions. It's a great game. It's a great sports sim- simulation game. But it's, it's riddled with microtransactions everywhere you go. I was playing it the other day. And it's not only the virtual currency you buy, there's actually, there's so many sponsors in the game. Part of the story mode was actually you get an offer to buy something, a Gatorade product in real life for discount. And it was incorporated into the story mode. And it was so obviously like unnecessary and plugged. It was like a bottle. You got to design the bottle and everything. And then it was like, hey, do you want to buy this bottle in real life? Twenty four ninety nine, Like, it gets to be a big joke, to be honest. But other than that, the game's really good. With the WWE 2K games, 2K20 was so graphically bad, I think even now patches have made it a bit better, but it's still not where people want it to be. So, because of those reasons, if we were just based it without the sports games, and there were like no none of these ridiculous microtransactions, 2K would be up there. But... That for me just knocks them down a few pegs and they're going in the beta. Next up, Epic Games. So they're actually founded as Potomac Computer Systems in 1991. Um, and it used to be called Epic Mega Games as well before they just changed their name to Epic Games. Uh, but they basically, when you think of them, you think of Fortnite. Like, let's be real now, you think of Fortnite. But they developed the Unreal Engine. Which is so important in gaming. Um, it's been used for so many, so many big games. You know, it's like they've been part of Unreal Tournament, Gears of War, and obviously, like I mentioned before, Fortnite. So no matter how much you hate Fortnite now, and think it's childish and whatever, you still gotta respect it and respect what they've done, and respect the Unreal Engine. So for me. 
Epic Games are going in A tier. Okay, now an interesting one, Blizzard. So, Blizzard Games, now Blizzard Activision, founded in 1991 under the name of Silicone and Synapse Incorporated, and obviously most famous for World of Warcraft in 2004. They did games before that, and uh, such a massive uh, MMORPG, like probably the biggest one ever, I want to say. I don't know the facts, but... Unless there's one in, like, Korea that's huge or something, but I'm pretty sure it's the biggest ever. Now, they've moved on to things like Overwatch, uh, which I think is good. I like the concept of it, but I think it's a bit, like, full of weird anime stuff that I'm not really too into, so I can't, I can't really play it all that much, to be honest. Um, Diablo series is pretty good. They released that as well. Hearthstone, the training card game, and StarCraft. So they've had like these huge hits and huge series, but really they've had some massive, massive blunders. There's the only way to put them, massive blunders um, across the, the years, which have really brought them down a peg for me. So if we just go through one of these quickly. So the first one I've got, in 2010, Blizzard announced they would require real name accounts, received instant backlash for this. This this was for their forums. So they required real name accounts for their forums. An employee said, th and this is a quote, they posted their real name to show it wasn't a big deal. This employee, of course, got doxxed, his picture, phone number, address, um, all over the forum. And as a result... Uh, they kind of scrapped that idea, which is a uh, a good thing, I guess. I think I think that could probably be done better now, but I just thought it was a funny story. More recently, in 2019, in a Hearthstone tournament, a player named Blitzchung used an interview to show support for the Hong Kong protests. So because of this, Blizzard disqualified him and banned him for a year. Blizzard, obviously. I've got a big market and the Chinese market's huge for them. So people thought, oh, they're banning these guys to silence them so they can't say, uh, can't have their say. So they banned the player for a year. He got all these earnings over that year taken away, I believe, as well. So people protested this at BlizzCon and the CEO of Blizzard, J. Allen Brack, apologised and said that it's nothing to do with the Chinese government. And he actually reduced the ban to six months. But why wouldn't you just take it away? You know, They're trying to say, oh, we don't allow people to have political views and stuff, which I think is just, uh, just wrong. So that's another one there. But the one that really, really got me was players were expecting a big new Diablo announcement at BlizzCon. And they did get a Diablo announcement. But it was for Diablo Immortal. A fully fledged mobile game. The crowd reaction was terrible. Uh, there was loads of booing. Uh, they took questions from the audience. One guy asked if it was a late April Fool's joke. To the booing, the Blizzard employees on stage gave a rather rude and ignorant reply. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones. Phone. Right. I'm going to put Blizzard in the seat here, but it's only because of the, like, they've had huge controversies. Um, I think they've had great titles over the years, but the way they've handled those titles and the way they've treated their, their player bases has been pretty poor. So in the seat here they go. Okay, next up, CD Projekt Red. So... These guys are a Polish company, they're founded in 1994, and they're best known for the Witcher series. Uh, they started off actually translating games like Baldur's Gate into Polish. Uh, Witcher series for me is so good. Witcher 3, one of the top, top, top RPG games. So much to do in that game. And this company really has... I haven't got a lot to say for them because they really haven't done anything wrong. All I can say is I'm really hyped for the upcoming Cyberpunk 2077. So this company, CD Projekt Red, going in the S tier. 
Okay, next up, PlayStation. So, the first PlayStation console was introduced in 1994. The PlayStation, obviously. I don't know why I said that. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? Jesus. Uh, the PlayStation 2 was then released in 2000. The PlayStation 3 in 2006. The PlayStation 4 in 2013. And now the PlayStation 5 is expected to come out at the end of this year, 2020. We all know PlayStation. They're pretty good. I've had PlayStation 2, 3, 4. And I can't say I've really been disappointed with any of them. I think the Xbox 360 was better than the PlayStation 3. But. The Xbox 360 was so good. I think that was just the user interface and the online uh, service was better, to be honest. And I think it had been so hard to contend with because that was such a good console. In my opinion, one of the best best consoles ever. So, PlayStation had a, a few problems. Namely, in 2011, one of the biggest data breaches ever. That, that, that led to a network outage, which lasted 23 days. So they had to turn off the network because um, there was an intrusion in which approximately 77 million accounts details were compromised. So I remember this um, and I remember not being able to play PlayStation <laughs> online and being pretty guided about it. So that, that's a huge leak and flat, I just have to take them down one and put them in the A tier. But other than that, they'd be in the S, you know, it's PlayStation, dude, you can't hurt. Okay, next up, Activision. Founded in 1979 by former Atari game devs who were unhappy with the way they were treated by Atari. Uh, so they started Activision. Now we all know Activision for publishing the big titles like Call of Duty. They also uh, published Guitar Hero as well, which is pretty fun. Um, yeah, like Activision again, pretty much they do everything pretty good. Um... They got no real controversies. They've been part of massive, massive games. I'm a fan of the Call of Duty series. I think everyone is. You just have to think back of how long that's been going and how big it has been. The only real downside I think of is when they dropped the Infinite Warfare trailer. And it became the most disliked video on YouTube, I believe. But other than that, I think they're pretty solid. And they're going in the Aether. Okay, next up, Bethesda. Found in 1986. Uh, for me, Bethesda was a once great company. If we look back into the earlier 2010s and maybe even just before there, when they're at their peak, their height of their powers, if you will, everyone was excited for the next Bethesda game. It, obviously, they're responsible for the Elder Scrolls series, huge, Dishonored, and Fallout as well. But they've had a few, few mess ups along the way such as Fallout 76, which was a huge, buggy, seemingly unfinished mess of release, and instantly got dumped by the excited fans who were waiting to play it, gave it one play, sick and bored of it, a buggy mess, dropped it. Another mess up with the Fallout 76 release was players were promised, with a special edition of the game, a canvas bag, canvas Fallout 76 bag. When the game was, was released and shipped out to players, this bag ended up being nylon. Many people were frustrated about this. People were even more pissed off, by the way, when they got sent these nylon bags and then found out the YouTubers and selected people had been sent actual canvas ones. Bethesda blamed this basically on a lack of materials, which is pretty uh, ridiculous for such a huge company. So, because of this and their recent years, if it wasn't for the, the re such recent mess-ups, Bethesda would be right up there for me. They used to be right up there for me. They used to be one of my favourite companies. But now, they're in the B tier, baby. Okay, next one. Let's go Bungie. Established in 1991. Bungie were first concentrated on making games for Macintosh. They were then acquired by Microsoft in 2000, who repurposed their project Halo for the Xbox. So, Halo, huge series, hugely successful. After that, Bungie split from Microsoft in 2007, but Microsoft retained the ownership of the Halo franchise. 
unfortunately. In 2014, they then released Destiny and then Destiny 2 in 2017. Those were also great games, uh, like futuristic first-person shooters, if you will, or space first-person shooters. And they're really well known to have informal and really good workplace culture and like a small games company, even though they've released some huge, huge, huge video games. I really enjoyed Halo 3. That was one of my favourite um, online shooters at the time it came out on the Xbox 360. So ha- Bungie, just what you want, they just people who make great games and they just know what they're doing. So they're going in the S-tier. Okay, Ubisoft, founded in 1986. Ubisoft or Ubisoft? I don't know. You tell me. They published series such as Rayman, Assassin's Creed, Far Cry and the Tom Clancy game. I have some beef with Ubisoft, not going to lie. They launched Uplay in 2010, which has terrible servers and it doesn't let you play games off, offline. If you go on Uplay and you're not connected to the internet, some games it just doesn't let you play. And most of the time, the servers are down. I remember I used to play a lot of Rainbow Six Siege. The server's always down for that game. It's so common the servers would be down for that game. Especially on PS4 for some reason. In 2013, they had a network breach as well, which leaked the information of potentially 58 million accounts. And on top of all of that, they're French. So, they're going in the C tier. Okay, Rare, or Rareware, founded in 1985. They're known for Donkey Kong, Banjo-Kazooie, and the Conker series. In early years, they were given an unlimited budget by Nintendo to make games for the NES. At this time, they made the much-memed Battletoads. Quite a legendary game in uh, some circles. Also, they made the revolutionary GoldenEye. 007 and in 2002 Microsoft acquired Rare in this time they made one of my personally favourite games to play Grabbed by the Ghoulies this game if you haven't played it I believe you can get on um, Xbox store for about like £6 or something or you can buy uh, like the Rare I think it's called like Rare Retro game bundle or something it has like all their old uh, Rare games on it it's honestly quality, so there's a shout out to them. The Microsoft takeover wasn't all good, as Rare's focus shifted to making games for Kinect, which wasn't hugely great. And um, most recently, you'll know them for Sea of Thieves. A lot of reports and uh, from insiders and people inside the gaming industry say that Rare's lost a lot of their talent over the years since the Microsoft. Uh, takeover which is unfortunate because their early games were just very very great due to that loss of talent in recent years and some slip-ups and not being the company they once used to be they're going in the b tier for me okay cool so next one up rockstar established in 1998 and most well known for red dead midnight club Max Payne, Manhunt, and of course Grand Theft Auto, GTA 5 being one of the best selling games ever. It sold over 110 million copies since its launch in 2013. Huge when that game released. I remember I went up to Gale on the, it must have been the week of release at least, and they were telling people, make sure you have enough storage on your Xbox. This game's got two gi- two discs and it's a 30 gigabyte download. And back then, <laughs> well, I just thought, I think that's crazy considering now you just have updates for games like Call of Duty which are like 80 gigabytes. It's ridiculous. It's not all great with GTA 5. Like, people have been pining for GTA 6 for the longest time but they're making so much money off of these microtransactions in GTA 5 that they kind of held back on GTA 6. I mean, it's been seven years. And for that fact to line, <laughs> they're going in the A tier. Okay, 
EA and the next one, very, very controversial company. Founded in 1982 by former Apple employee Trip Hawkins. What a name, Trip Hawkins. I don't think you can get more American than Trip Hawkins. Um, they're a huge, huge company. Develops and publishes Battlefield, Need for Speed, Sims, Medal of Honor, Dead Space, Mass Effect, Dragon Age, Army of Two, Titanfall and Star Wars games, of course. As well as sports titles such as FIFA, NFL, NBA... NHL and UFC games. The sports games tend to release annually and have minor gameplay differences and graphical differences other than the UI. And as of course, as most sports games, they're riddled with microtransactions. A common criticism of EA is that the release games bare bones with lots of desirable content hidden in DLC and behind paywalls and they give you the bare minimum to work with unless you want to shell out the dollar. Their service is also pretty abysmal sometimes. So for this fact, EA is going in the C tier. Okay, next up, Naughty Dog, founded in 1984 and then acquired by Sony in 2001, wanting to create a character based platforming game that would use PlayStation's new 3D capabilities they created, who is it of course, Crash Bandicoot. After releasing multiple Crash games, they then began to work on a new platform for the PS2, another one of my favourite series ever, the Jack and Daxter series. Naughty Dog's first release for the PS3 was then charted Drake's Fortune, which came out in 2007, which was successful and granted quite a few sequels. The trend of Naughty Dog is that you usually do one franchise per console. This was broken when they decided to do The Last of Us on PS3 as well. And then Last of Us 2 come out on PS4. So for that, I think they deserve an S. They're one of my favourite companies. They're the best. Okay, Nintendo. Ah, Found in 1889, sorry. Found in 1889, can you believe it? By craftsman Fusashiro Yamauchi. They used to use Hanafuda. I think that's how you say it. Hanafuda playing cards. If you like Japanese playing cards, they were handmade. Um, but they ventured into many lines of business throughout the years. And they produced their first console, the Color TV game, in 1977. However, Nintendo only gained international recognition in 1985 with the Nintendo Entertainment System. Since then, Nintendo has released many franchises such as Mario, The Legend of Zelda, Kirby, Metroid, Super Smash Bros. and Pokemon. The consoles such as Game Boy, the SNES, Wii and Switch. Um, main gripes with Nintendo, which is why I really don't like this company, um, despite the great franchises they had, is that their game prices never go down. I've got a Switch, um, I've had a few Nintendo consoles, and their build quality for the money you pay seems quite bad. The dock on the Switch, I know it has to be mass produced, but honestly, I think it's just cheap plastic shit. And obviously their fans, Nintendo drones, just lap it up, whatever, like, oh, you want a wheel, like a little plastic wheel for your Wii? That'll be 50 quid, mate, and they'll lap it up. So, Nintendo going in the C tier. I hope you guys enjoyed this list. Um, I did a little bit of research on it, a bit different to what I usually do. So, I hope you enjoyed it. As well, and as um, I said at the beginning of the video, these are just my opinions. So, don't take it to heart, okay?